hello guys uh, uh, welcome to this definitely works uh, this time we'll be going through accelerometers and we'll be doing uh, measurement of tilt using accelerometer and this will be a kind of uh, lecture series i mean video series not too big and uh, this time uh, in part one we'll be going through introduction to accelerometer well, let's get started uh, accelerometers are uh, kind of uh, electromechanical devices that can measure acceleration forces and in the market there are uh, many types of accelerometers available but the most popular ones are names that are based on microelectromechanical systems and, uh, and they are solved. initially uh, uh, these accelerometers were built using piezoelectric materials but uh, they used to be bulky and uh, I mean large in size so they went to think on like how can we make them compact and they came up with this uh, micro electromechanical systems and nowadays we use this <coughs> first uh, micro machine accelerometer was designed in 1979 at Stanford but as you know as something comes in university it takes time to get to the industry I mean they'll verify and make sure that it's working completely so you can see it took like 15 years to get to the industry and have a mass production so as we are talking about MEMS let's have a quick view of, of this MEMS uh, this uh, term was coined by Professor R. Howe and in 1989 and some other guys mm. to represent this manufacturing at a scale like in micro electronic circuits and not like large lake machines this uh, MEMS includes part of microelectronics, but uh, there are some characteristics that doesn't match with uh, electronics altogether because there are some mechanical parts like uh, holes, cavities, channels, cantilevers, membranes. So they kind of in imitate the mechanical parts. That's why they've given, given the name of electromechanical because there is electronics plus mechanics. Then uh, these MEMS are not only used to make accelerometers, there are various application of uh, MEMS like they are also used in pressure sensor, inertia sensors, microfluid, bio MEMS, optical MEMS, the optical MEMS are used in lens, eye lenses etc. They are also used in humidity sensors where the material property will change like the epsilon, dielectric constant will change and depending on that they will measure some parameters to come up with uh, some electronic criteria to measure the variations that happen due to this dielectric change now let's have a look at the working of this kind of uh, MEMS uh, accelerometers particularly we will go through capacitor accelerometers as you all know that uh, parallel plate capacitors uh, the value of it is given through this equation that is C0 is equal to epsilon naught that is uh, dielectric constant uh, epsilon A by D epsilon is the relative dielectric constant so A is area and D is the distance between two plates so uh, due to acceleration we will face the change in the distance between the micro machined plates that makes the capacitor in the MAMS accelerometer and that distance will result in change in the capacitance value because that capacitance depend on that distance and this change in capacitance is measured using proper electronic circuitry that is present inside this uh, MAMS device and uh, that circuitry will be uh, able to give us the value for the acceleration by looking at this change in the capacitance and to do these calculations uh, we also use Newton's law as we'll go through how we we'll use it, uh, we will discuss this later. Discuss that later. Um, now, uh, here we can see uh, what exactly is there inside uh, a MEMS accelerometer. So this is the kind of structure that we have got inside that. Uh, we have got uh, springs on top and bottom. Uh, then we have these uh, springs with uh, spring constant Ks two springs and we have fixed outer plates 
and we have movable plates so whenever uh, this mems uh, experience some acceleration this movable plate will move up or down and due to that this capacitance c1 and capacitance c2 will vary in its value and due to that we'll get some value at this vx we'll see uh, what exactly this vx and c1 c2 x1 x2 and this one v0 and minus v0 so if we look at this uh, electronic circuit that measures the acceleration uh, we'll get all that term pretty clear like uh, that c1 and c2 i mean uh, they all are uh, connected together to make a huge c1 and c2 so otherwise if they are small then the change in the value of capacitance will be very small and we will not be able to detect that and this minus v0 is a square wave and uh, v0 is also i mean square wave but they have 180 degree out of phase relationship with each other and we have one megahertz oscillator or some other frequency oscillator but it should be greater than some value that we'll see and these are given to this uh, c1 and c2 so if there is no acceleration we will have vx equal to 0 and there is a buffer i mean it's uh, just to uh, i mean so that this v uh, vx doesn't uh, load the demodulator that's why we use the buffer and uh, there is a demodulator that will give our uh, the output which will be proportional to the change in the values of capacitance and uh, there is a equation which shows what will be the value of uh, vx uh, this will be equal to uh, v naught into c1 minus c2 over c1 plus c2 and uh, this can be then this is equal to x o over d into minute where x is the displacement caused due to the acceleration d is was the initial separation between the plates and v0 is the amplitude of the signal that we are given so this kind of uh, equation i mean if you want to go in uh, much detail you can look at some documents to uh, some professors and or some IEEE journals and you will be able to find how you will get this equation so now this uh, electronic circuit is giving us uh, vx is equal to this thing uh, next uh, we'll look at how this vx represents our acceleration right so according to hooke's law for ideal springs the springs that we have on the top and this bottom so uh, for those we have fx this force restoring force will be equal to ks into x where ks is a spring constant and x is the displacement so when this law is combined with the I mean, used with the newton's law we get this equation that is ma is equal to ks into x this uh, the middle part that is m into d square x by dt square uh, is nothing but this this acceleration into mass only this second derivative represents acceleration <coughs> so now if we bring this m on the right hand side we get acceleration is equal to ks by m into x and if you represent x by using this equation that is x is equal to vx into d by v naught we'll get this equation that is a is equal to ks into d by m into v naught into vx so we can see that acceleration is directly proportional to the vx so this is how we get uh, uh, i mean acceleration using measuring the value of vx so now that we know how this uh, mems capacity accelerometer work uh, let's have a look at some selection criteria for this accelerometer because in market also there are so many accelerometers and uh, we can get confused like which one to use there are so many vendors like free scale analog devices they make their own accelerometers so there are various criteria depending on application you can select but uh, uh, mainly are uh, do you want accelerometer with a analog output or a digital output digital output accelerometers have some uh, kind of uh, PWM outputs or they have mm, the kind of uh, I2C interface with the available on the accelerometer or there are uh, analog output accelerometers which gives you analog data and you have to convert it uh, through some A to A2D converter in your microcontroller so depending on your application you can select one of them then you can also go for number of axes and some accelerometers have two axes, some accelerometers have three axes. So, which one do you need? You can select on them. Sensitivity also 
uh, sensitivity to this G is also an important parameter. There are various accelerometers with various G sensitivity. 1.5 G is highly sensitive. I mean, this kind of are used in gaming and uh, tilt measurement and all. And uh, high G, like 6 G, are also like some 10 G or more. They are used in some collision detection, like they are used in the cars for airbag system. Then free fall detection and all high G values are used. So depending on the application, you can also go here. Then you can also have a look at bandwidth output impedance. Output impedance generally accelerometers have output impedance of 32 kilo ohm. Uh, so whenever you are interfacing it with the microcontroller, you should see that uh, what's it. Uh, the A2D is input impedance, and uh, they should match or uh, not matching like they should uh, help i mean proper value so that the sample and whole circuit of your microcontroller works properly then you should also have a look at noise characteristic of these accelerometers and you can select one of the accelerometers for your application mm, so there are some easily available accelerometers in the market namely this adxl from analog devices uh, you can see this one has got uh, kind of uh, i2c interface then this is uh, another from freescale this one has got analog output this, this one this is the one which will be using in our demo so this finishes the introduction part thanks for watching and uh, keep watching and also have a look at part two. thank you have a nice day